Well, hey guys, um, out on a new, another property today in a neighbour's place. Um, he's sent me a message the other day and said there's a few dogs travelling through, so I asked whether I wanted to come and put a few traps in the ground, so I thought maybe we'll come over this afternoon and stick a few in, and we might stay till a bit later and try a bit of howling later on. Even if I don't, don't see any and come up, they might come up around the area if they do hear a bit of howls and hopefully poke around and get caught in a trap. It's a theory anyway. So I got the dog and just again let him off and let him have a bit of a poke around and hey Tish, see what you can find. Alright, well, here you go. I'll let him have a good look around and see what he can find, I reckon. Okay, so I've got three traps in. I've got one just at the base of this tree just here. I've got a bit of stinger and a bit of rag shoved in the grass there with a cable tied under the tree. Then I've got another one over there in the scrub a bit further and tied to a bit of a drag in there. So I actually got one there last time I was here trapping. I've got a bone there with a bit of bitch's urine on it. And I've got another one in the fence post just over here. Um, with a bit of juice and stuff from dog blood and liver and urine mix that I've made up from a bitch I trapped the other day. So I got that in there, just rubbed it on a bit of a bit of the barbed wire there, with the cable tied off around the post. So anyway, we'll see how they go. I might move up a bit further and. See if I can find any more spots to set one. Okay, so I've got one one trap in there just under the rail because look what I've got to contend with. <laughs> They're all nice and quiet and very inquisitive too. So I put it under the rail there. Tish come along here and he marked all the way around this trough. There's obviously been dogs coming here for a drink and peeing on the side of the trough. So if I can encourage them to go around the trough and under the rail there, I might even put a bit of scent just the other side of the post or something just to encourage them to try and get them to walk through. So, <clears throat> see what happens. Well. Might be a waste of time doing that. <laughs> I put this trap in about not even five minutes ago. The cattle have set it off already. They're all there mobbed it. So I think it'll be a waste of time. I might pull it up and leave it. I've got one, just leave the one underneath that trough over there, on next to the trough under the rails. So they can't step on it there. Hey girls, you're being a nuisance, aren't you? You don't know any better. <laughs> I might look for a different spot for this one. Well, I'm out here this afternoon. I've got four traps in the ground and I uh, um, think cattle set uh, one, another one off I just put in. So <laughs> I'll just come out of this, this dam here, you can see behind me. And there's some dogs have been here. A few dog tracks here in the mud. So let's see what we can find as we go. I might 
might even sit up there be soon and have a few howls and see whether they can call anything up. But the wind is sort of coming from that way, but it's only an ever so slight breeze. As you can see, the dam and the water's really still. It's just ever so slightest breeze coming from the west. So, might give a few howls here in a minute and see what shows up. I've got my, um, this is a Ruger American Ranch Rifle and 223. It's a Leopold scope on the top and a hyperpod from um, Eagle Eye Hunting Gear. So I'll camp up over here, give a few howls until it gets a bit dark. And then I'm gonna show you my <laughs> new baby. I've got a new thermal scope. It's a Pulsar Thermion 2 LRF XP50 Pro, you see? That thing is amazing. And it's also, the night I got it, the Pulsar released an update so that the rangefinder actually does all your calculations for you. So if it's out at a fair way, it'll tell you where to aim to compensate for the bullet drop. So that's one thing I'm pretty keen to try. So anyway, I might go and set up a camp over the other side of the dam over there and see what happens. Well, here we go. This is my, my new scope. My aiming one had to be, um, they couldn't fix it. So they said they're gonna give me a new one. So I said, well, other than getting another one the same, I'll pay the difference and hit the local gun shop and they had one of these Sammy and T LRF, LRF XP50 Pro in stock, so I said, well, I'll grab it. Have a look around the dam here. And I'll give a few howls in a minute and see if anything comes in. Knowing my luck, something will probably come up behind me, but I'm hoping with the ute down there, it's parked just over the bank there. If anything like they might be coming from the mountain up that way. See how they go. about this scope that I liked about the other one it doesn't have recoil activated video but the plus side is I can just hit the record button up here if I remember <laughs> but I can record any time I don't have to the other ironing didn't have a dedicated record button so it would only record when it was felt recoil or a bump or something which was a pain well I'm out tonight just getting over to the neighbour's place, or sort of on the boundary fence in our place still. Just so I can look both ways. And but the wind's sort of wrong to be going after anything in our place. It's sort of from where I am. So I'll head over the fence in a minute and see if I can find any dogs or pigs or anything. Or I might even try a bit of howl and see, see how we go. I've got my so I'm in scope on my 2 day 3 and also the hyperpod 2 from Eagle Eye Hunting Gear. So we'll see, see if we can get a dog or a pig or a cat or something. Well, that was a pretty big waste of time. <laughs> I went out, walked a fair way, didn't really see anything at all. I saw a couple of hairs and a rabbit, but and a heap of cuddled, and that's about it. <laughs> so, you know, it's a beautiful night to be out. Full moon tonight. 
But anyway, it's 11.30 now. I'm going to get to bed so I can get up early in the morning and go and check these traps. So, see what's in the traps tomorrow. Well, I'm just coming along here. And here's one trap I set. Something's got the pan cover and ripped it out. Ripped it up a bit, teared it up, and there's the pan cover there. I don't, I'm not sure whether what's done that. But then over here, we've got a fox in the trap. Hey, Foxy. Are you the one ran ripping up pan covers? What you doing lying under the log? <laughs> hey, mate. You have beautiful skin on you. Beautiful white tip on his tail. What you doing under there? You're all twisted up. You can't get out like that. Anyway, I'll dispatch him and reset this trap. Alright, got the trap reset. And got a little vixen. The vixen that was in the trap. I reckon she'd be the one that was chewing up paper too. All this paper that I redid that set because she chewed up. Ripped the pan cover out and chewed up the paper. All right. Well, that's a bit of success anyway. One fox is better than nothing, but we've got two traps up ahead. We'll see if we've got a dog up there. Well, nothing in any of these traps either but there's been a big dog walk past right past one of my other traps down here and he just waltzed right on past it was only probably only half a meter off it so I think what the problem was my trap is just down there near some lime bushes and he walked right past it on the track. But the trouble is the, the trap is on this side of the track and the wind last night was coming from the sort of the west, northwesterly wind. And so I reckon it's probably just blown, been blowing the scent away so he walked right past it without even smelling it. So hopefully tonight the wind changes and we might pull him up he goes past again. So, that's what this trapping game is all about. It's just, a lot of it's just by chance. Other parts it's on good judgment of the weather, trap placement, and also the uh, lure um, selection as well. Sometimes you just sort of got to try one. If it doesn't work, try another one. If that doesn't work, try again. <laughs> so until eventually yeah, there's no sign of them hanging around. So to do a proper job, you sort of got to have them in for at least a couple of weeks. Just try and mop up everything. And sometimes just to catch something. So it's all a big waiting game, a guessing game, and a trying game. So 
Anyway, we'll keep trying and wait and see what happens tonight. shut here in a way and I had to get up over the gates and sort of just high enough to reach above the gates but couldn't get a steady enough lean so I leaned it against the gate and it's not too bad but I wasn't sure whether it was a cat or what it was to start with. But I was trying to torture him just make sure it wasn't a possum. He's down now. We'll go and have a look at him. Well, here he is. Not a real big one. But, yeah, a gutted one. All the same. That's a female. That's good. First cat I've taken with the new. Sammy and Sammy and two XP50 LRF model thermal scope. That thing's unreal. So hopefully that's the first of many, many more to come. <laughs> <laughs> I made a made this cat into a good cat. There you go. Nice little kitty. Okay, so I just scrapped the cat opened up his stomach and sort of to share the, with you what the contents was in it or what was inside the stomach it had a, I think it was a duck or some kind of little bird a lot of pink feathers which were a baby and looked like a bit of a webbing from the foot, not sure some kind of little bird and there was pieces of the skink in there too so anyway it's good to get that one down we'll find some more soon too. That's the first cat I've actually seen for a fair while, so I think all the ones I've got last year have certainly been made an impact in the numbers here, so which is good. But anyway, keep going, I'll see you in the morning from checking traps. There's nothing here yesterday morning when I checked, except the trap I had over near the fence had been set off. Another one in here had been set off too, so I pulled them both up. And then we got a fox here this morning. So this is actually the first time I've ever caught anything using a bit of stinger. I had a stinger and a rag in there. So I'll just shoot him before he does anything silly? Hey mate. Oh, can't see over the top of him like that. Shouldn't have to have two shots of the 223 to kill a fox in a trap at two feet, but... <laughs> can't use a scope when you're that close, you sort of got to point and shoot. <laughs> think it might be a little dog fox. Because it was just over here, I got a vixen a couple of nights ago. Yeah, dog fox. Okay, so I reset the trap. 
morning the fox got caught it was about 20 past 8 last night so I reset that trap and put it, uh, put it back in the same place it was and I've used put a bit of my dog or dingo here and there as well so if dogs come poking around it might, it might just, just a little bit extra to attract them I don't know, probably don't, didn't really need to do that but you try anything really <laughs> anyway we're just going to head up here and check these last two traps the dogs have been there for two nights in a row but haven't got caught or anything so see what happens see if there's anything there this morning nothing there a bit of paper exposed let's check the green and <laughs> dog tracks neighbors dogs are barking up here yep there's a dog track here But I haven't been able to get him to go under that rail. I'll check the camera and see what they're doing and what time they're here. Okay, so the dogs are coming in on this cattle pad. They're about coming in about the same time every night, about quarter past one in the morning. They're coming down this cattle pad here. I'm just wondering. I might try and set a trap just in here off the cattle pad a bit. So I might just put it in right there. Because uh, hopefully the cattle don't mob it. It's just a risk we're going to have to take. So the dogs are travelling down this track. And a bit of scent here, they should get a whiff and go to investigate it in that bush. So see what happens. It's a cattle racket, the cattle racket. <laughs> and try something else, but they won't commit to going underneath that rail near the trough, so but they don't feel safe, I'm not sure. So I'll quickly just stick a trap in here and keep going. Okay. So we've got the trap in. Tied off in a drag behind that bush. The dogs are coming down this track here to the trough. Cattle probably will be too, but hopefully they just keep walking and don't mill around here too much. But I put a bit of Tish's pee on that bush and I rubbed the bottom of the bottle over here so if the wind is blowing over it just might put a faint scent. It'll drift across it, it might make them stop and start sniffing around. And they got the trap just in the ground right there. So anyway, keep going and go and check the traps at home and see if anything happened over there last night. Well, there's still a cat along here somewhere. He's walked along the track here last night. So, got that one last night. Oh, a couple of k's over that way. But still more to get yet, apparently. But it's good. Bye, right, well, I'll see you soon. I'll be able to take